Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shankar Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи и гражданки. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. John Wayne Cheeseburger is speaking. The cowboy that came from wild, wild east. So today I'm gonna try to answer to the one question that comes up quite often on my channel and especially during my live Ushanka show programs. A lot of viewers keep on asking the same question. Do I watch Bold and Bankrupt? But before I start answering this question, I want you to do something. I want you to pause this video and type in the comment section your thoughts. Why you think I need to watch Bold and Bankrupt YouTube channel. This way I won't precondition you with my answer. So please do that. It'll be really interesting to read the comments and then we'll see what's gonna happen. And this question actually reminded me one of the Soviet uh, era jokes. It's when a kid approaches a Jewish person like a shoemaker and he's like, is it true that Jewish people always answer to the, any question with the question and a Jewish guy look at him who told you that so in reply to do you watch bold and bankrupt I really would like to ask same question do you think bold and bankrupt is watching Ushanka show and I'm asking this because I heard somewhere that Mr. Bold holds the world record for the amount of times a word Soviet was mentioned in a single video Actually, I recall him popping on my channel once, about two years ago. I had a video called Dating in the USSR, Why the Soviet Guys Never Met Girls in the Bar, and he commented under that video. He wrote that uh, they still have a brand of beer in Russia they call Zhiguli. I wonder if it's the same brand or one of these new mock Soviet brands. And I, at that time I didn't know who the guy was, but I noticed that there was a lot of likes for that comment. And there was uh, some other comments, like this one from Teppo. I guess he is from Finland. Nice to see you here, Mr. Bold. All of my favorite Soviet-era inspired content creators in the same place, apparently. I don't know if I can call myself Soviet-era inspired content creator. I'm a Soviet-era <laughs> creator. There's nothing inspired there. I was a part of the Soviet era. I never answered to his comment because I never was a beer drinker and I don't live in Russia anymore, so I have no idea what is Zhiguli beer. I recall Zhigulyovskaya beer because my dad was constantly drinking it. But friend of mine, Vitaly, who lives in Kiev, and he's about my age, I think maybe a couple of years younger, he actually published a really big answer, which is uh, pretty much explains everything, including uh, origins of the Zhiguli uh, beer name. So you can pause the video right here and read, read his comment. I don't want to read it, but you can check it out if you're interested in Soviet beers. And I don't know if piva, as, as we say in Russian, beer, piva, Zhiguli, good or not, but their advertising and design of their beer cans is simply amazing. They utilize heavily this Soviet uh, pinup art, and my goodness, it looks really cool. I don't mind to have a collection of empty beer cans from Zhiguli. Oh my goodness. Or as we say in Russian, yolki palki. That's what I call alcohol and booty call. But let's not get distracted, comrades, and come back to our main question. If Mr. Bold is so interested in everything Soviet, 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 why is not interested in Ushanka show? I mean, Ushanka show is like a Soviet-style all-you-can-eat buffet. It's like a Shani's. It's just I serve Soviet dishes. Some of them anti-Soviet. Some of them pro-communist. But it's all made from scratch. Soviet dishes, all-you-can-eat. Myself, I tried to watch uh, Bold and Bankrupt a while back when the first comments started popping on my channel. Do I watch uh, that channel? Uh, I should watch that channel, so I found his uh, video, and that one was about riding Soviet bike, and I couldn't watch for longer than a couple of minutes because he was just making such a huge presentation out of riding a Soviet bike, and for me it was just kind of strange. Well, as a former Soviet, I mean, I used to own a bike, 
back in the day in Kiev. It got stolen. It was nothing special. I mean, I ride right now made in China bikes, which were more advanced and way better quality than my uh, Soviet made Minsk. But you know, I'm a former Soviet. I'm real deal. So for me, it wasn't that interesting, but it looks like it's quite interesting for millions of viewers all over the world because currently Mr. Bull has like two point, almost 2.8 million viewers. So he knows what he's doing. He's really good at it. There's no doubt about it. But recently I decided to give him another try, especially because he went to Ukraine, went to Kiev and Chernigov. All those places I'm very familiar with. I was born and grew up in Kiev. I was in Chernigov on my way uh, to the village up north. I don't know how many, 50 times in my lifetime, maybe more often. So I decided to watch uh, his show again. So I put it on the big screen and together with my wife, Cheryl, uh, we watched his video about going uh, to Chernigov, which is a it's not small town, decent sized uh, city, about 140 kilometers north from Kiev. So here's my feedback. Uh, first of all, big picture. I don't know why Mr. Bull decided to go to Ukraine in the middle of winter. Yes, Kiev is an ancient and beautiful city, but as any big city, it's really not a good place to visit during the winter. It's cold, it's slushy, it's wet, it's not fun to be outdoors, and Kiev, it's a lot about walking the streets and exploring the city. So winter is the worst time you can go to uh, my hometown, Kiev, and same with Chernigo. And of course, we still have an uh, issue with COVID-19, so like I don't travel at all right now, though I really want to go and visit my family. I'm still um, on the fence waiting till this COVID uh, nightmare will be over. For all of you guys who want to visit Kiev, visit Ukraine, the best time to go to Kiev will be like mid-May. This when the chestnuts, it's like a symbol of Kiev, the chestnut tree, Kashtan. It's when the chestnuts are in bloom and it's beautiful. So mid-May, weather is mild. It's not too hot yet because we don't have a lot of air conditioning going on in Kiev. So it's a mild weather, warm, uh, beautiful scenery. There's a lot of parks with chestnut trees. So that's good time to go mid-May. Other option is to come sometimes in the fall, I would say mid to end of September, when all the trees turn yellow, we have pretty colors, so that's another great time to visit Kiev. Once again, mild weather, it's not hot, but it's not cold yet, it's not rainy, so you can go on the long walks along the Dnieper River, explore the parks, explore museums, so that's another great time to visit uh, Kiev and Ukraine, sometimes in the second part of September. But I just thought about it. Maybe Mr. Bull did it on purpose because, you know, this has got your adventure element. It's like that saying that stupid decisions make great stories. So if you go somewhere when it's inconvenient time, poor weather, then maybe it's more fun for people to watch in the comfort of their couches at home, watch somebody else, um, uh, what is this, drudging through the snow and how the rest of it goes. I'm not sure if he made any videos about Kiev. Uh, it's becoming harder to find any uh, Soviet Soviet uh, things in Kiev because they had a new law that they removed a lot of monuments and a lot of symbols. They renamed the streets. But still, you can find stuff in Kiev that um, really Soviet, especially our huge monument, Rodina Mach. Um, our motherland, this giant aluminum lady that holding a sword and a shield. I personally think it's really ugly, but it's ginormous and I think it's taller than the Statue of Liberty in New York City. Another cool place to see and to show would be Bisarabsky uh, Central Rynek, Bisarabka Central Market, right downtown uh, Kiev on Krishatik. And right across that uh, old big building, there's a really interesting spot. Since 1946, I believe, uh, there was a, a red granite monument to Comrade Lenin right across from the Sarapka market. And unfortunately, it was destroyed a couple of years ago. I'm saying unfortunately because it has a really interesting history. Lenin never visited Kiev, but that monument actually traveled all the way to New York City back in the 30s. It was part of the Soviet exposition at the World Fair. 
Then, of course, it uh, came back. Then war started, and after the war, they were looking for good home for Comrade Lenin. They decided to install it in Kiev. So it has a really interesting history, so I feel bad that it got destroyed. But you can still see remnants of that monument, pretty much just the pedestal right there across from Besarab Karinak. Then, of course, another cool place, and it's really easy to show and explore, is one of the deepest uh, subway stations in the world. I believe for a while it was the deepest, Metro Arsenalne. It takes forever uh, to get to the actual station, so that'll be a cool uh, spot to explore. And for all of you guys who are big Soviet fans, there's another monument in Kiev, which is has a quite interesting history and current situation. It's the monument to... He was the hero of the uh, Civil War, uh, Shors, and uh, his monument, I believe it's on the Boulevard Shevchenko, Shevchenko Boulevard. Uh, it was planned also to be removed, but since I think it's on a, like UNESCO list, it's really old monument, uh, it was illegal to remove it, so they end up uh, boxing it, so they blocked it from the view, so that's a really awkward situation. You have a museum, so the Shors on the horse, but you can't see this monument from the street because it has a like a big, uh, almost looks like a box uh, blocking the view. So I'm not sure if any of that uh, Mr. Bolt showed you guys, but uh, talking about his trip to Chernigov, um, I was quite disappointed because Chernigov is actually an ancient uh, city. It's over 1,300 years old. So there's a quite a few interesting uh, places to see. But of course, in the winter, it's not uh, really comfortable to travel and especially explore the city and uh, for some reason he was wearing sneakers which is like I'm not sure why but it, when it's so cold and so snowy and slushy you don't want to wear sneakers and you know with the modern day technology you don't need to be a local guy to know all the cool places in your city um, just basic Google would show you that for example uh, one of the places in Chernigo it's worth uh, to pay a visit is the local railroad station Vaxal, Central Vaxal Central Station. It's a really cool building. And back in my day, it was it had quite a few Soviet symbols. Um, I hope by when I make this video put together, I'll uh, put some pictures or find some in my archives. So that's a really neat place to visit. And right next to the railroad station, there's a super Soviet style uh, bus uh, station, Central Bus Station of Chernigov. I've been there many times traveling. And right next to that bus station, there's underground bathrooms. Very, very Soviet and very, very stinky. I'm not sure if they still open, but back in the day, you like you have to, uh, you know, like hold your breath, run downstairs, do your business, and run back up. Uh, there is also a Soviet T-34 museum in one of the squares in Chernigov, uh, dedicated to um, liberating uh, the city from the German occupation back in probably 1943. I believe Mr. Bolt likes beer and Chernigov is famous for its beer. They have a, they call Pivzavod, so it's like a beer factory. It's not um, some small brewery, it's a large factory built in 1976 using equipment from Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia at that time. And they have tours, they have testing, so I'm surprised he didn't go for that. Um, Chernigov is, that's their probably biggest uh, Employer right now is the Chernigovsky Pivzavod, the Chernigov uh, Beer Factory. So while I was watching uh, Mr. Bold, I got impression that, you know, like what he does with his videos, uh, he's like skipping rocks. You know, he doesn't go deep. It's, it's fun to watch rocks skipping the surface, but he never goes deep. He's just, and he's a... Uh, Focus was mostly, oh, look, there's a babushka, there's an old lady shoveling snow here, ha, ha, ha. And there's a priest shoveling snow over there, ha, ha, ha. So, you know, he's um, trying to be witty. I think I said that word correctly. But, and maybe it is witty for foreign viewers. But for me, as a, I would say, former Ukrainian, uh, former Soviet citizen, it more sounded like being condescending. I hope I said that word correctly. It's a, it's a tough one for me. And it's not only my opinion. Uh, a friend of mine who's uh, watched his uh, show too, he was not happy. He said he, the way he showed Chernigov and how he was like 
talking about women shovel and snow he wasn't happy about it so this he was condescending in my opinion and um i guess people like it i mean he had over two million subscribers but he kind of like you know like i'm so much better than this people attitude and you know it it doesn't work really well with locals but you know it's my humble opinion as a ukrainian uh, but he definitely knows what he's doing i mean my goodness almost three million subscribers uh, Mr. Ball, definitely a monster of YouTube, you know, like we used to have a Monsters of Rocks, of rock music. He's a monster of YouTube, uh, no doubt about that. Um, he done a good job, and now he has a second channel, I think, uh, Ball Daily. I'm not sure why he decided to uh, make more channels, but uh, he's definitely doing good for himself, and I <laughs> don't think he's bankrupt anymore. With that amount of subscribers, I think he's doing just fine. And what also interesting, uh, despite that we kind of working on the same topic, right? Life in the Soviet Union, but just from completely different angles. You know, he trying to explore something that was uh, gone 30 years ago, and I'm sharing my memories from that world that I lived in for 20 years and it's gone for 30 years. Um, YouTube tells me that people who watched my channel, first of all, watch his channel. Like there is a list of. I think like nine uh, channels that people also watch along with my channel and uh, Bold and Bankrupt is on the first place. But back to the original question, do I watch Bold and Bankrupt? The answer is no. Um, what I could compare to a uh, picture, uh, there is a person that explores abandoned coal mines. You know, he goes in there, check it out, trying to learn. And there is a former coal miner that spent 20 years in those mines I don't think you'll be interested to watch uh, YouTube videos about exploring this, uh, you know, remnants, abandoned uh, towns, abandoned coal mines, because, you know, that's I've been there, done that, and had a T-shirt. So this is why. Well, comrades, it's all I have to say about that. I hope you like this video. I'm very interested to um, read your comments in the comment section. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. to have a signed copy thank you and if you love my channel and would like to show your support please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show for as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet